Gabby and Allison. First of all, I've been following you since I was in middle school, and it has been a joy to grow up with you. Like Gabby, I also transitioned, and it's been really cool to listen to Gabby's journey. Thanks, both of you, for your vulnerability and humor over the years. Anyway, to the question. TDLR. What do I do if I think I might be wrong for my partner, even though I love them? How do I deal with a privilege gap in my relationship? I, he, him, have been dating my partner, they, them, for seven months, and I love them deeply. Our relationship has been very healing for me since it is the first gay and gender-affirming relationship that I've been in, and my last relationship was so toxic. We are both about to graduate college and have been discussing moving together. We communicate pretty well and generally have a good relationship, but there are some challenges that worry me. We have a large privilege gap when it comes to money. I have some familial wealth and they do not. I also have a bigger support system than them. There are a few other areas, but I don't want to get too specific and compromise my anonymity. Anyways, this has caused them some difficult situations where they find it hard to relate to me. I love them a lot, and I try to help in the ways that I can, offering emotional support and covering purchases, but I can't bridge this gap. I feel like things keep coming up when I accidentally hurt them or bring up trauma, not because I have intentionally caused, but because I am highlighting the differences in our lives. Mm. They once said in a moment of frustration that I have everything handed to me while they have to work very hard for everything in their life, and this causes them a lot of sadness. They later apologized for the wording of that statement, but I feel like what they said is true. I don't know how or if I can stop this from happening, and I worry that our relationship is just putting them through more harm. I think they have unhealed Mm. trauma that I keep triggering. I know they want therapy, but it is expensive and hard to access. I love them a lot, and I think they are the most wonderful person, and I am scared that maybe they would be better off with someone who understood them better. Aside from trying to talk through things with them, which I've been trying to do, but doesn't really seem to resolve anything, I don't know what to do. Any advice is appreciated. So I think the heart of this question is, should you break up with someone when you feel you're not the right person for them, but you can't make that decision for them. Does that make sense? Yes. It's really hard, (laughs) you know? And it's also really hard because you guys are really young and they haven't had a chance to probably process and work through a lot of stuff, both through their age and the fact that they don't seem to have access to therapy. And it's really tricky. I kind of was hoping just to read this and then have you figure out the answer, Gabby, (laughs) because I don't know it. (laughs) So I was in a relationship when I lived in New York with someone who is much older than me, shock of all shocks. And we would fight and we just never saw eye to eye on anything. And I would constantly say, you just don't like me. Like, you just don't want to be with me. And he would say, no, 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 that's not true. And I'd be like, I don't think, like, I loved him. I was obsessed with him. But I was like, I don't think I'm the right person for you because you're constantly frustrated with me. And he'd be like, that's not true. That's not true. The relationship ended. And to me, reflecting on it, I'm like, I constantly gave him outs where I was like, it seems like you don't like how I am. And he would push back on that. And there was only so much that I could control. Like I could have broken up with him, but I took his word. But the evidence day to day in our behavior did not match his word. And I knew that I was bugging him a lot, bothering him a lot, causing him to not necessarily, this is not the same as like triggering harm, but like he didn't like the way I was and it didn't fit in with his lifestyle or his wants. So now I'm thinking like, should I have ended it and just been like, I'm not the right person for you? Or how many times can you be like, I just think maybe this, the problem here, the core problem here is not what we're discussing. It's that we are not compatible. And ultimately he ended it with me and like, what was that just in the end up to him? You know, even though we were together for probably like a year, was that in the end just up to him to decide if I was compatible with him or not? And how how long should I let that go on? You know, yeah, I'm wondering if, you know, the framework of this email is like, should I break up with them for them? Right. And I wonder if it will be more helpful to think is this the right relationship for me? Mm -hmm. Because I can't imagine that it feels good, just your mere existence to be triggering to your partner, right? That can't be something that feels good for you. I also come from a privileged background and it is something that I'm very aware of. And 
it's also something that you were born into, right? And so there is a way where you can move through the world as someone with privilege where you don't acknowledge it, where you say things like, oh, well, you just work hard and then you'll, you know, like, or there's a way of like, you know, accepting that you have massive privilege, knowing that, trying not to abuse it, trying to use it as a, to help people when you can. But if you're dating somebody who just can't get past something that is just fundamentally true about you and your background, that can be really hard and it can make you feel really bad about yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder if it will be more helpful for you to think about it through the lens of, They are autonomous. They get to decide if they want to be with me and if this relationship is good for them because I don't want to infantilize them in any way and Mm -hmm. it is their decision. But I also get to have a decision here. And maybe this isn't right for me because I end up feeling bad about myself all of the time. Mm -hmm. And I end up feeling like I have to walk on eggshells all of the time and that I have to apologize for having a support system when having a support system is a really wonderful thing. And and it doesn't mean that you should throw it in their face that you have this support mm-hmm. system, but it can make it where you end up feeling yucky about this thing in your life that is just a wonderful thing that you have, you know? So maybe a reframe of, of the way that you're thinking about this relationship and what you should do might be more helpful. And I think also having a blatant conversation with them where, where you're saying, look, I'm, I'm thinking these things. I'm wondering if this is the right match because I often feel like I am causing you harm. And that makes me, and one, I don't want to cause you harm because I love mm-hmm. you and I don't want to cause any, probably you don't want to cause anybody harm. But two, it also makes me feel yucky that I'm constantly harming this person who I love so right. much. Right. I mean, I'm definitely guilty of, and I want to bring up a mindset change for you too. I'm definitely guilty of saying exactly what you said to people for sure. Ver- verbatim almost. Which part? Can you just clarify? I've had to work for everything and you've had to work for nothing. And saying mm-hmm. sort of harsh things about partners of mine who've come from money. And my partner right now has a really great support system and has, it's hard for me to be like the parents are rich because to me, people seem rich that maybe aren't. So I like, am, you know, it's a, it's a subjective word, but they have support though. And as a partner, I have to reframe it as not as we're adversaries, not as they have this and I don't, but rather we are a partnership. And how lucky is it that we have this? It needs to be something together that is not making them your enemy, but making it nice for you guys together as a partnership. Like I started crying because we were at dinner with Mal's parents and Mal's dad very casually was like, well, if you ever can't make your mortgage one month, like we'd cover it. And I was like, what? And they were like, yeah, like we wouldn't let you lose your house. And I started crying. Just between-